my dudes, how are you doing? I hope you're having a goddamn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be looking to replicate and recreate Athletic Bilbao's 4-2-3-1 system under the likes of Ernesto Valverde. Of course, as per always, if you enjoyed this video, hit a like. If you, if you do enjoy it, obviously. As well as, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe. It would be absolutely fantastic and appreciated from yours truly. So, let's hop on straight into the video. So taking a look at the formation at hand, it is a 4-2-3-1 wide, and I have tweaked it ever so slightly. I've moved the two central defensive midfielders into the more central midfield area, making them obviously central midfielders opposed to the defensive midfielder. Therefore, it will be one goalkeeper, two centre backs, two full backs, two central midfielders, one attacking midfielder, two wider midfielders, and then of course, one striker. So, moving on to the tactics down, the tactical vision that I think best suits and reflects what Valverde as well as Athletic Bilbao are trying to replicate is wing play. Of course, they look to try and attack down the flanks more times than not, whether it's with a fullback or potentially a winger, looking to try and create those 1v1 type situations with the opposition defender, allowing for quite a few overloads in those wider areas and also allowing for them to exploit those wider areas with a potential cross or a cutback opportunity, waiting for players in the box to try and attack. As for the defense and the defensive style, of course, it's set to pressure on heavy touch, so more so they look to try and keep their shape and their structure. I will say this, Athletic Bilbao are very much focused on their defensive behaviors and making it very hard for the opposition to try and break down so I think pressure on heavy touch best suits them because if there is an opportunity if there's a misplaced pass or a heavy touch taken they look to try and latch onto that and look to try and turn it into a goal scoring opportunity for themselves as for the team width however it is set to a very compact 25 allowing for the central areas of the field to be flooded with more so athletic Bilbao players obviously tr trying to create that very compact unit making it very hard for the opposition to try and place balls or players in between the lines and therefore it will force them into those wider areas of the field as for the depth, however, it is set to a, a lower mid block, but it's still set to a mid block, so keep that in mind. But what this does is it helps protect what Valverde and uh, Bilbao are trying to do on the defensive side of things. It does prevent quite a, a lot of space in behind between the goalkeeper and the defense and the defensive line, so therefore you can very rarely be exploited in transition. Moving on to the offense and the build-up play for that is set to balance, of course, looking to try and maintain the structural integrity of the formation at hand when going forward, of course. At the same time, it can look to try and incorporate various aspects of the other build-up players, whether it's a slow build-up, obviously this is more you know, with Val Valverde, he does look to try and keep the ball maintained as much as possible, pass it around, wait for the opportunities to arrive, and then look to try and exploit them. But you have very fast, pacey wingers, so there are moments in the game where there is that quick action that, that gets taken place where the likes of uh, Inaki Williams or Aniko Williams or one of your forwards makes that run in behind and they'll look to try and have that quick action with the pass over the top. So you are looking to try and incorporate various aspects such as that. As for the transgression, like I said earlier, it is going to be a possession-based brand of football, allowing for players to more or less maintain their positions but try and support the offensive play as much as possible, whether it's forming the little triangles or diamonds uh, um, of passing play and then slowly and progressively moving it towards the goal and looking to try and exploit the space that the opposition will then inevitably leave open. As for the width, I've set it to 70, of course. It's not the widest of, of widths, but it still allows you to have a bit more space and pace down the flanks, and you are trying to generate that with the link-up play between the wingers as well as the fullbacks. Moving on to the players in the box, I've set it to around 6. Now, this will allow for your front three to be able to break into that area, and I do know that Every now and then, one of the fullbacks, as well as maybe one of the, the deeper lying central midfielders, they do look to try and make those charges into the attacking third. So every now and then, you will tend to see one of them in and around that attacking area. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always on the channel, I have set it to four. So taking a look at the instructions, starting off at the back with the goalkeeper, Simon. He is set to come for crosses, being very good at being able to claim those aerial balls when they are whipped into the box. At the same time, because you are playing a mid to low block at times, you don't really require him to be a sweeper keeper. And I will say this, naturally, I think he is very, very good at being able to read the game, looking to try and read the passages of play, potentially reading the breaks in the defense and looking to try and anticipate them. But like I say, you aren't playing the highest of lines, so therefore it's not really required for your goalkeeper to be a sweeper. So therefore, I think a more balanced approach suits this style of play. As for your two centre backs, of course, they are set to their base set of instructions. There's no major changes to them. But in terms of your full backs, slight tweaks and variations to the two. So for Demarcus, he's a little bit of the, the more attacking of the two. 
So his instructions will consistently be join the attack as much as possible, be the out there ball down the right flank. As for the run side, it's set, set to be overlapping, looking to try and provide a lot of width down the right hand side, as well as step up, being very aggressive and imposing, getting nice and tight to the opposition player and making sure that they can't create in those wider areas. Of course, you are looking to try and flood players into those wider areas, so you need your fullbacks to be very proactive and reactive to anything that the opposition can throw at them. As for the left back, however, Yuri, he is set to a balanced approach for the attacking run. So if the opportunity is there to try and supply an attacking run going forward, he will definitely look to try and provide that. But more times than not, he'll look to try and stay back a bit. So I think a more balanced approach best suits and reflects the way he plays the game. As for the run type, of course, when he does get forward, he will look to consistently make those overlapping runs with the left winger. As for the defensive position, just like with the right hand side, you would expect him to be a bit more aggressive. So therefore, step up is required. Into the midfield, we've got the likes of Vesca. So this could be Vesca, Garcia or Herrera. I think they tend to fill his role in this void quite well um, in this more freer box to box type um, number six slash eight position. So for their role going forward, their attacking support is set to a balanced approach, like I said earlier, trying to fulfill that box to box mentality type role. And therefore a balanced approach does do this. As for the support on crosses, however, like I said earlier, every now and then when one of the, the front three don't, you know, break into that attacking area, you can allow for either your number 10 or one of your number eight slash sixes to be able to get forward and get into that attacking third. I do know that the likes of Garcia scored a fantastic head. I can't remember who it was against, but he, he like, the uh, I think it was Inaki Williams. He like whipped in a great cross and right there at the back post, Garcia popped up with a fantastic diving header. So you still want to try and replicate and recreate that type of role. As for the interceptions, however, it is set to aggressive, looking to try and create that pit bull type mentality in the midfield, looking to try and generate maybe a few misplaced passes, allowing for a few turnovers, and then obviously looking to try and transition into the attacking phase of play. As for the defensive positioning, it's set to cover the wing, looking to try and facilitate and cover that wide area if the likes of the left back is out of position, but more times than not, you would more so require him to stick to his position as much as possible. In terms of the sticking to position, when going forward with the possession in your favor, you would look to try and make sure that this player is more central at times, looking to try and supply creativity in the central areas as much as possible. So as for the other midfielder now, of course, the more defensive of the two. Now I will say this, in FC24, you can't really replicate that give or, or take type situation because the reality is that both Vesca and this man right here, Ruiz, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name, but both Vesca and Ruiz, they have this give and take type relationship where the one will get forward and the other one will stay back. But of course, you can't really replicate that in this game. So therefore, I've selected Ruiz to be able to stay back while attacking and the likes of Vesca to be the more interlinking, more box to box type player. But either or can have this role. So for the right hand side, we have selected him to stay back while attacking as well as stay on the edge of the box for the crosses, not looking to break into that attacking third and looking to more or less try and rotate play when required. As for the interceptions, because the likes of Vesca will be the more of the aggressor of the two, you would re require the more defensive um, player to have a bit more of, of a calmness to his game and therefore normal is best. As for the defense position, just like with the likes of Vesca, you would require him to drift into those wider areas and try and cover when required. Onto the offensive side of things, the free roam role does help, especially when building out from the back. Like I said, you are playing a possession based brand of football. And the likes of Ruiz will look to try and drop into little pockets of space, show for the ball, help with the ball to play going forward, and also allow him to pop up in the little half spaces, slightly higher up the field as well. Speaking of which, slightly higher up the field, Sunset, he is the more attacking of, obviously, the three midfielders, of course, playing in that um, central attacking midfield role. So for the defensive support, I've set him to a basic approach, so sometimes allowing him to drop a bit deeper, but other times allowing him to more or less stay a bit higher. As for the support on crosses, however, I've set him to get into the box. He does tend to almost play as a, a secondary striker in certain moments. Both him and the captain, Muni Ayin, play very much off of the shoulder of the more physical number nine. So therefore, you are trying to replicate that role very efficiently and more so the likes of Sunset does break into the box quite a lot. As for the free, uh, or as for the positioning freedom, I should say, it is set to free roam. He does tend to pop up in the little half spaces, look to try and drift into those open areas in and around the attacking third and more so you are trying to replicate that role for him. And then finally, for the interceptions, he does tend to work very, very hard, looking to try and press the opposition's back line, forcing errors, forcing mistakes and looking to try and create turnovers. As for your two wingers, of course, the Williams brothers, Nico Williams and Inaki Williams. One place for Spain, one place for Ghana. Fantastic. Anyways, they've got the same roles on either flank. 
Both are told to have a basic defensive support, so sometimes dropping a bit deeper, showing some defensive awareness. Other times, if the opportunity is there, they can look to try and leak slightly higher up the field and be available for a potential counter-attack. As for the chance creation, I've set it to a balance width, allowing for them to either hug the touchlines and create a lot of width down the central areas of the field, or potentially, if they do have a supportive bombing on fullback, they'll look to cut inside and play as a more inverted winger. Moving on to the support runs, however, both of them have got loads of pace. Both of them look to try and exploit the opposition as much as possible. So therefore, you're going to look to try and get them in behind as much as possible. Whether it's a switch of play into in uh, Inaki Williams or maybe Aniko Williams in the gameplay, I did tend to do that quite a lot because, of, of course, they are looking to use their pace to try and penetrate the opposition's back line. And more times than not, it does tend to work very well. As for the interceptions, it's set to normal. And then finally, for the support on crosses, you want them breaking into that attacking third landing on the end of crosses or cutback opportunities and looking to try and be as attacking and as a th as much of a threat as possible. Finally, taking a look at the striker and his instructions, of course, Guruzeta, I think that's how you pronounce his name, I'm not sure, but anyway, he is set to a drift wide for the support runs. He does tend to look, look to try and vacate that central area for the likes of a Sunset or a Muni Ayin to try and break into that more central area. And he does a very good job at drawing players out of position. So more or less, you are trying to replicate that role for him. But I will say this, he is very good at being a very physical, strong, imposing target man. So therefore, you are going to set him to target player. He can be very good at winning the aerial duels against the other uh, opponent center backs, of course, being very good at backing into players, linking up play very effectively with the players in and around him. So you are trying to replicate that role. As for the interceptions, it is set to normal. And then finally, for the defensive support, you want him to stay forward, being very much the outlet and the linking chain to a potential counter-attack. So there you have it, guys. That is how I would replicate Ernesto Valverde's 4-2-3-1 Athletic Bilbao set of tactics. If you have enjoyed this video, as for always, hit that like button down below. It lets the YouTube algorithm do its thing and share the video with other people that like content like this. And, you know, get the channel up there. And if you are new to the channel and you have enjoyed this video, please subscribe. It would go a long way in helping the channel reach its goals of 5,000 subscribers. Hopefully soon. Anyways, guys, out of 10, I would give this a solid 8. I think in terms of the ability to use this in FC24, it is very, very effective. It allows you to have that pragmatic style of football where you can be very defensive, keep that nice, strong structure and shape, making it very hard for the opposition to break down. But it still allows you to have a very good offensive outlet, whether it's on the break or looking to try and dominate games in terms of the possession stats. The likes of Athletic Bilbao do tend to do this more times than not. The, the, in the few games that I did watch and I did like review and stuff, they dominated possession more times than not. I think it was only really Real Sociedad where it was more of a 50-50 split, but Real Sociedad in, them, in their own rights is very good with the possession stats. So it is a, a very good system to use. Anyways, I'm rambling. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Enjoy. Have a smashing damn day. I'm out.